How to animate fake 3D text in Canva. Let me show you how. Open a video doc and press T on your keyboard to enter a text. Now, type pop this on separate text fields cause we want them to animate separately later. Once done, select the text like this then you'll notice that the font selection will appear on the upper left panel. Now click it, then the fonts panel will pop up on the left side. We're looking for a narrow typeface to use on our design. So on the search bar, you can type segment A. Click on it, and choose the thickest weight which is black. Fix its scale like this. and place it on the center for now. Our fake 3D text has three different parts. We have the surface, the base, and the extrusion. And this will be our surface. Now select them, and let's color them gray for now. Let's apply an outline to it. So let's click effects, and choose outline. Then let's change it to black. As you can see, the outline is a bit thick at the moment. So let's reduce it a little bit to make it slicker. Let's try bringing them closer like this. Move it a little bit more using your left arrow key so it's more precise. Once done, let's duplicate it to create the base. Feel free to put the surface on the sides for now so you can easily select the base. Now let's retain the black outline and make the fill color black as well. Select the base, then click the color box and simply color it black. Once both of our surface and base are set up, we can now stack them. But first, let's organize the layers so the surface sits on top of the base. So let's place the surface on top of the base, place them on the center, then let's zoom in using this slider on the lower right panel so we can see the detail more clearly. Then offset and angle it a little bit like this. At this point, we'll now be adding the extrusions to actualize the fake 3D look of our text. But first, let's enlarge it. Let's create a rectangle by pressing R on your keyboard. Shrink it to something like this. Then color it black to adapt the color of the base as it will serve as the extension later. Now put it on the topmost layer and rotate it to make sure that it flushes to the edges of the base and the surface. Just a note, you will never get it perfect every time since Canva is an auto grid lock so it's totally fine but just do your best to close the gaps. Make sure that you cover all the openings. I will not fast forward this part so you can see how everything is done thoroughly. As mentioned, you won't be able to perfectly snap and close everything, but that's okay. As long as the overshoots are not significant, you should be good. Some letters are a bit tricky, so try to be more patient with them. All good with O. Let's go with another P. On with the T. Now to the H. It's not easy to spot the edge of H, 
so try to just eyeball it for now. Going to the eye. And finally, the S. Now, zoom out a bit to check the other corners. Duplicate the extrusion shape. Then fill in those gaps. Let's fill that tail end of the S. And let's now top off the bottom part. Done with the S. Now the I. Then H. The T. Now going to P. Then O. We've actually missed some spots on the piece, so let's go back and fill them in. Do a final sweep to make sure that everything is closed. Now, let's color pop pink. And this yellow. Finally, turn the background into cyan. Looks like we're ready for animation. Duplicate this page. Now on page 2, pull one of the extrusion shapes toward this angle, but don't overstretch it. And I think this should do it. Now grab both text surfaces. Then pull them toward the angle of the extrusion. And yes, that looks closed. Once finished, pull all the other extrusions as well and pattern them from the angle of the first one. Again, this part is a bit tricky, so be patient with it and do your best to close everything. Good thing that the shapes locks as they align to the edge of the text. For curves like this, you just really have to eyeball it and make sure that there will be no visible bumps when you align them. Going to S. And let's finish its bottom part. Now on to the other letters. As we close the bottom part of the letters, you can see some tiny holes or cyan spots seeping through them. But don't worry about them for now, as we'll address them later. Now we're done with the bottom part. Let's make sure that all the extrusion shapes in the middle area are all stretched out as well. Now 
Once all the edges are closed, look for some holes like this. And cover them as well. Feel free to just duplicate the existing extrusion shapes to patch the holes. This hole in the middle part of the S is a big one. So stretch the shape all the way to cover it. And rotate it clockwise a little bit as well. Now let's go with the remaining ones. After covering these holes, make sure to copy paste them to page 1. Let's start selecting all the additional extrusion shapes and make sure nothing's left behind. And adjust them accordingly. Just shrink them like this so they don't go beyond the layers. Now, once everything is adjusted, let's now address the tiny holes from earlier. So on page 2, let's send back the letters again behind the extrusion shapes so we can easily adjust them. Then go to each of the tiny holes and cover them up. Once you're done with the bottom part, just go ahead to the upper ones. This was actually an honest mistake on my end, cause I didn't notice the holes right away. So in your case, once you see them the first time, feel free to cover them up right away. Since everything is pretty much covered up, we can now place the surface on top of everything. And don't forget to do it on page 1 as well. Now, hover your cursor between the pages to access transitions. Then select Match and Move. I have other tutorials which have used Match and Move, so feel free to check them out as well. Review the animation by scrubbing through the timeline or by simply pressing play. And that's looking good so far. We want to make the animation snappy, so let's make their durations 0.6 seconds. Let's make sure that our layers are organized. Now let's start with page 1. Select pop layers like this and click position to access layers. Then on the layers panel, just simply drag them toward the top and once it snaps, release them and there you have it. Then simply apply the same method to page 2. Again, let's select the pop layers, put them all on top. And that's it. To make the loop animation, duplicate page 1 and make it page 3 by dragging it in front of page 2. Don't forget to add match and move as well. Feel free to scrub through the timeline again to review if everything's animating well. Now, you have a basic loop animation. At this point, we can still push it a little further by exploring different combinations. Now, add the page 4. Let's get this pop from page 2. And paste it on page 4. And let's get the this from page 3. And put it again on page 4. Always make sure that the layering is consistent. Now let's select all the pop layers on the layers panel and drag them all to the top like what we did earlier. 
Now add the page file. Let's have the stretch this and flat pop. Just check the layers again and feel free to make some adjustments if needed. Now just duplicate page 2 and 3 and drag them both in front like this. Make sure that match and move transition is applied. Do some final adjustments on the duration. Let's make sure that all pages are 0.6 seconds. And adjust page 5 as well. And hit play. Don't forget to check my other videos to learn how to animate like a pro in Canva.